Hey guys, welcome to Planting Alabama. Today I'm doing a video, guys, per request of one of my subscribers on insect and pest control. I want you guys to take a look at something here. These are a few bell pepper plants that I have that I put in the uh, bed with my sweet potatoes. You can clearly see the extensive leaf damage here on these particular sweet peppers or bell pepper plants. Also guys, you can see the culprits flying around in view of the camera. Some small little flying insect. Not really sure what that is. I figured there would be a lot of that here underneath these trees. This canopy, there's a lot of bugs and insects. But what we're going to do today, guys, is make a foliar spray that will help combat this. And so if you'll follow me over to my workstation, I'll show you what we got going on. First of all, guys, we're going to pick up a couple of ingredients. Well, actually one ingredient. Yeah, this is my tomato plant. That's about all we need. That small piece right there. We're going to cut this up. And I'll show you what we're going to do with it here in a minute. Okay. I've got my tomato leaves cut up. That's about a palm full. You don't need many. Also, guys, you'll notice I've got a piece of cigarette tobacco. Because we're making two different foliar sprays for our plants. Basically, you just take your tomato leaves. And you put them down in the water. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. I just prefer using the sun method because with this particular uh, project, guys, I wanted you to see how the water should look after your foliar spray is ready to use. Normally, I would use the pond water, but there's al already a discoloration to that water, so I'm using tap water. I'm not putting the lids on because I want that chlorine and chloramine to evaporate out as best it can uh, the next thing guys you're just gonna let this sit in the Sun for a couple of hours and when we come back and we get that discoloration that we want that bleeds into the water we'll go to the next step okay so as I mentioned you can use <clears throat> a couple of different methods with this um, one you can take a gallon of water to about a half cup maybe a cup full of your chopped tomato leaves and you can boil it on your stove same thing with the tobacco product um, you can boil it let it cool strain it put it in your pump up sprayer and you're ready to go you can also uh, use your if you use a liquid fertilizer that would be okay to add it in as you go ahead and uh, spray for pests and different bugs that would be perfectly fine you just use the same method or same amount that you would normally use when fertilizing now like many other plants tomatoes produce a chemical known as AT2 or allelochemical which can be toxic to many herbivores and different flying insects and pests that attack your plants only difference is these chemicals are found in higher concentrations in tomatoes because tomato plants produce the little fine hairs and fibers that you see on the stems and sometimes on the leaves. And a lot of these chemicals depend on your area and what tomato uh, variety you may be growing in your area. So keep that in mind if you're using this as an organic uh, pest control. And now your tobacco products, um, they're used to treat white flies, gnats, uh, root and leaf aphids, uh, thrips, and leaf miners. And it's recommended that you use these quite frequently if you're spraying for pest control because they're short-lived. Your homemade remedies are usually not as strong as commercial and so that's what the uh, 
use of the tobacco is for. Your brassicas, in particular your uh, cabbage plants, but in general terms, the most common uh, predator for these plants are going to be slugs. Now, a lot of people use the beer and place those around the plants strategically. That's fine. That works. If it works for you, use it. But what I like to do, as you can see, is just take some eggshells and sprinkle around the plants. I'm going to finish up this uh, foliar spray. I'll be using the tobacco blend. Uh, there's less uh, filtering needed. I don't have my filter, but it, but you can see down in the container here. I've already got my uh, fertilizer in there. I'll be fertilizing as well. So I'm going to. Uh, that's the color. I let this sit overnight. Since I was doing this, uh, making this up anyway, I decided to go ahead and and uh, just make enough to. Uh, used for my whole garden. And I'm going to go ahead and mix these two about half and half. So bear with me. So I got these, uh, the tomato leaf and the tobacco tea mixed in here in my pump up sprayer. I also have my fertilizer. And so guys, the only thing left to do is just go ahead and spray the affected plants. And I do recommend that you only spray those that are affected by pest and bug damage. And so by doing this guys, you're allowing your plants to build up their own natural immunity against pest and diseases. And this allows you to have a better strain of heirloom seeds. If you are a person who saves their seeds each year, this allows your seed line to become stronger and more pest resistant naturally. It's okay to use pesticides. Um, this is just a couple of different organic methods that I've shown you here in this, in this video. There are a lot of methods, uh, a lot of different products out on the market. I'm just a stickler at using what you have on hand. And this is uh, one of the things that I, I talk about a lot on my other YouTube channel as well. But guys, just remember, allow your plants to put out their natural defenses first. If your plant is inundated or overwhelmed then yes yeah, step in take the necessary steps to uh, control your pests in your gardens and guys you want to make sure you soak your plants not just the tops sides of your leaf plants but underneath as well because a lot of your uh, white flies and aphids and uh, insects will try and nest underneath the leaf so be sure to get underneath as well if you like this video please don't forget to like share and subscribe and until next time god bless